another one. Is a software development engineer and test a good career or am I doomed? I just don't know. Everywhere I see, all careers except, except SDETs are getting hyped. In fact, all I see is SDET as a career is not fancy and sometimes I am ashamed. They said ashamed to tell people. I don't feel the value of SDET slash testing. It may sound weird coming from a SDET slash QA. Very few companies' clients invest in quality. Fang have very few QA slash SDET roles. Many teams are actually moving away from QA as devs are taking up the role. SDETs offer nothing special like SDETs slash QAs aren't paid like devs and under pressure always. Nothing cutting edge about it. I am sorry if it comes across as negative, but more time I stay in the role, I am questioning myself. So I'm going to put the five minutes up on the clock and I am going to answer that real quick and then I'm going to toss it over to Drew. So um, I like my company, we don't have the title of SDET. We just have um, QA engineers. So like different levels. So like you have QA engineer, I actually start with QA specialist, QA engineer, QA engineer two, senior QA engineer, lead, staff, principal, something like that, right? Um, I, I, I'm in the senior, like mix, like I'm like senior, probably going, trying to get to the lead soon. Right. But I'll tell you this. Um, I, I do Terraform. I do, um, I write a bunch of code. Um, sometimes I sneak in and make a little bit of code change. Um, when the developers let me, um, what else do I do? I've written postmortems. Um, I don't know. I just, I just, I just insert myself into different places, right? And I just go and do stuff. Uh, and then I ask, I, like, I say, hey, can I do this? They're like, oh, sure. And then I go and I do it, and then I learn something. So, and then not to mention like all the automation stuff, and always pushing forward, always trying to be innovative and stuff like that. So, um, and at least my company, at least they are very, very big on quality. They have like they, they really. Um, think through their quality processes, their metrics and stuff like that. So I would say if you feel that your company is not valuing QA and as that, then you're probably not inserting yourself well enough and you are not like, you're just wait, sitting around waiting for orders and directions instead of pushing cute quality things forward and trying to get more involved. Um, you know, calling it like what they call it shift left. So, you know, you need to, you need to get, QA more involved and more um, more on the map. Uh, I think it, I think it's your responsibility. And if you think that someone is going to give you the opportunity, then it's just not going to happen. Um, it's up to you to to make it happen. So that is my thought on it. Um, I do a bunch of innovative stuff, um, and I think that everyone has the opportunity. You just have to you just have to go out there and get it. You know, no one's going to give it to you, so no one knows you anything. All right, all you Drew. All right, so. I love this question, to be completely honest, right? I go into interviews and they ask me, what do I think is the difference between like a QA engineer or SDET or vice versa, right? And it depends on the company, right? So you can have the term SDET and that can mean 22 different things. An SDET can be someone that does 100% code, right? They're dealing with DevOps, they're creating an, you know, Ansible, uh, projects, they're doing Terraform, they're doing stuff that you're doing, right? Things that you're talking about, creating Docker images, creating Docker platforms, running, um, you know, basically they're a DevOps engineer that does tests, right? So that's one. You can literally be an SDET and do 100% manual, right? It just depends on the company because they want someone that has the knowledge, quote unquote, to um 
to do automation, but we're just not in the in that frame right yet. Right, we're hiring for the potential to do automation in the future. Okay, you could be 50 50 where you're doing automation and you're doing manual. And by automation, we're talking about regression testing. We're talking about, you know, writing end to end test suites um, using Cucumber or, you know, robot or those sorts of projects or so, those sorts of frameworks while also doing manual testing. That can be an SDAT. Or you can be an SDAT that's doing 50 50 where you're doing 50% of the back-end infrastructure stuff like you was talking about with terraform and then doing 50 50 percent of the um automation doing regression testing making sure that in like making sure that every test that comes through is working properly right so it just depends on what type of role you're you're at what company you're at and how you see yourself adding value i mean you kind of hit it on the head like what are you doing and don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm out here trying to do, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel. If things are are working, hey, that's work. But as soon as something breaks, that is my opportunity to go in there and be like, hey, here's a way to make this better. I can add test around this part to make this work better. Um, I have always said this. This is something that is one of my huge taglines for, for my interviews. It's like being a QA or an SDET is like being the offensive line in football, right? You have, let, let me give you, let me give you, you have your quarterback. That's like, you know, the project manager. They're make they're calling the plays and making sure everyone is running it correctly. You have a running back. You know, those are your developers. Those are your um, DevOps engineers. Those are your, those are the people that, People come to see, right? Everyone knows Justin Jefferson. Everyone knows the great running backs. Everybody knows these sorts of people. But then no one talks about the offensive line, and that's the QA, right? They're under the most pressure. They're talked about all the time. But you know when, they're, you know when a team has a great offensive line or a horrible offensive line, right? All, when they have a great offensive line, the quarterback is running great. The running backs are running People are catching the ball. The quarterback's not getting hit. When it's terrible, everyone's like, yo, this team sucks. They're 0 and 100, right? And that's kind of what it is being QA. You are there to do grunt work. You are there to talk to everyone. You are there to do things that people don't want to do. And you have to put a smile on your face and keep it moving because that's your job, right? Um, if you're not... Like I play offensive line and defensive line. So that resonates with me a lot in terms of my personality of what um of what I'm working in. And it's like I'm not going to get this, I'm not going to get the limelight. I'm not writing these major algorithms. I'm not, you know, talking to the clients and making sure that everything is great. But I'm talking to the team and making sure, like, hey, we don't put out no bad product. Right. I'm talking, I'm making sure that. If, uh, if there are tests that are written, they're written well. There's no flakiness. There are no um, an ambiguity. It is a very clean machine. The object of being a, a good QA is that people don't know that you're there. Right? And, I mean, you would think with that, that's like, like, that's how I live. That's how I see the position. Because QA is one of those very stressful, you know, the last kind of, last person kind of talked on it being very stressed every day. It's like, yeah, it's very stressful. Like you are the last line of defense. And if it breaks, people don't look at the devs that wrote it. They look at the, the person that's testing it. And that's just the way it goes. So uh, I hate to say, I'm very sorry for this person. You know, you feel like as that is not for you. You're just under glorified, but that's just the name of the game, my dog. So I think as well, though, that because um, you said something like if if it's not if it's not like broken, don't fix it or something like that. But you can also you can also um, make things better. Right. Like, let's say, for instance, um, let's say, for instance, you like there's a way that things are done. Right. And it works, but it's not efficient, you know, and you're like, oh, um, I could I could probably write this script that does it this way, or I can instead of like setting up this infrastructure 
manually. Let me go and figure out how I can do it with Terraform. Or maybe we can see if we can save some costs by using AWS Device Farm, right? And that way, um, you make suggestions and you like, because people love saving money, right? So you make suggestions, you try to, you try to like um, give different ideas and it might not, it might not hit, it might not take, but the fact that you're actually putting stuff out there, you're contributing, then they're also going to see that, okay, like this person actually cares. They're, they're trying to um, push our initiative forward. So that's like, that's adding value, right? Um, so you need to be able to look at these different spots. And I think that um, being in the, the SDET spot or the QA engineer spot, whatever the role um, that you fall into at whatever company you are, you just need to look at like, okay, how can I, how can I contribute? And when you contribute, people are going to see it. If you're just sitting around like, all you're going to do is like click this button, click this button. No one's really going to like, it's not going to mean as much, right? But if you are looking to say, okay, um, we have this problem. Um, and sometimes people don't even know that, that there's a problem, right? But you can see, oh, I was looking into this and this is what uh, I suggest this. And then you can, they can take that. You can go back and you can, um, you can modify. You just throw out the idea and then you get more ideas and then you build off of that. So um, I think that there is more that you can do. Um, than just um, than just like sit around and and hope and wait, you know. So, all right, let's wrap up that question. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.